Hello and welcome to Dr. Manoj's quick revision of important points Environmental Science and Engineering course EVS and this video is about air pollution Watch and carefully listen to grasp the major key points However, you must refer to one of the recommended textbooks for a more complete study So, let's begin This is what is listed in your syllabus for air pollution However, I would like you to remember my simple method of remembering the unit in a progressive manner. Since there are about seven different types of pollution and you must not get confused between them. So we shall have a quick recap of the method to study any form of environmental pollution before moving on to air pollution. First of all, we need to define environmental pollution broadly as any undesirable change in the environment brought about by physical, chemical or biological agents. Now, you need to familiarize yourself with the basic concepts of seven different types of pollution namely air, water, thermal, soil and noise pollution along with nuclear hazards and municipal solid waste management. Now, here is a neat little trick that I would like to teach you. When you need to define any kind of pollution, simply use this first definition and change the word environment with the kind of pollution. So for example, air pollution can be defined as any undesirable change in the air. Water pollution can be defined as any undesirable change in the water and so on. But you need to get creative with the definitions of noise, thermal, nuclear hazards and solid waste management. Fine. Now for any kind of pollution, there are six broad subheadings under which you describe them. Of course, first you need to define the pollution that occurs as air or water or soil etc. Then you need to describe the sources of that particular pollution followed by the major types of that particular type of pollution. Then you can enumerate the effects of the pollution before finally moving on to its prevention and control. We shall look into each now briefly for specifically air pollution. Ready? Okay. Now air pollution can be defined as any undesirable change in the air caused by physical, chemical or biological agents. Once we have defined air pollution, it is important to point out the major sources of air pollution. The most common form of air pollution we are all familiar with is the open burning of waste. This is especially dangerous when the waste contains toxic materials, plastics and vulcanized rubber tires which can release dioxins, sulfur and unburnt carbon particles onto the air thereby polluting it. Now the sources of air pollution can be studied under point sources and non-point sources. For example, exhaust emissions containing nitrous oxides, sulfur oxides, carbon monoxide coming out excessively from a single car can easily be identified and controlled. This then becomes a point source. But how do you find out which of the cars in a busy traffic intersection are actually causing air pollution? That's the problem with non-point sources. They are very difficult to trace. Apart from point and non-point sources, there are also other kinds of sources called area source or line source. For example, if an air pollution takes place along a line such as in a straight highway, then we call it as an example of a line source. Now, let's look into the major types of air pollution or major air pollutants. Okay, we have seen the definition and types or the sources of air pollution. Now, let us look at the types of air pollution. There are six major air pollutants and I would like to call them simply as CNN, SSPEMO. They stand for carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxides along with other oxides of nitrogen collectively called as NOx, sulfur dioxides collectively called as SOx, suspended particulate matter otherwise called as SPM and ozone formed in the lower atmosphere. Then there are peroxyacetyl nitrates or PAN 
formed as part of the free radicals released during photochemical smog. Most of the air pollutants are released from human activities such as vehicle and industrial emissions. Suspended particulate matter is released from such emissions persist in the air and cause health problems such as coughing, eye irritation and visibility problems otherwise called smog. They also react with sunlight and form chemicals or secondary pollutants such as pan. Now, these pollutants have different effects on the environment, the plants and us and the animals. Let's see what they are. The effects of air pollution on our health are mostly respiratory problems that range from coughing in a dusty environment to severe and chronic bronchitis, comma, emphysema and a whole range of respiratory illnesses. In plants, however, the effects of air pollution are very specific as they cause four major disease conditions which I would like to call simply as cane, which is C for chlorosis, A for abscission, N for necrosis and E for epinasty. In the environment, suspended particulate matter forms chemical reactions with the sunlight and leads to what is known as photochemical smog. The other major problem is acid rain. Here, sulfur dioxides and nitrogen oxides released from human, industrial and vehicular activities go up to the atmosphere and come down as acid rain containing nitric acid and sulfuric acid. Over time, acid rain can corrode structures, debark trees, eventually killing them and even acidify the soil. In fact, it was the effect of acid rain on the Taj Mahal that prompted the Supreme Court of India to enforce that all U engineering students study environmental science and engineering as a direct result of a public interest litigation filed by India's renowned environmentalist Sri M. C. Mehta. We are now briefly going to see the preventive and control measures for air pollution. My strongest suggestion is to first have a clear idea of the difference between prevention and control. You can watch a YouTube video from me on the introduction of environmental pollution if you don't have a clear idea. Right then, some of the most common preventive measures that can one can take against air pollution is to reduce vehicle emissions. This can be done proactively when people reduce usage of individual vehicles for transit and instead use public transportation. Open burning of waste should be discouraged and avoided and wherever possible use alternative sources of electricity that reduce the burden on thermal power plants which are a major source of air pollution. Now for control mechanisms there are a variety of pollution control devices ranging from the simplest of catalytic converters to bag house filters where particulate matter is collected in bags to be disposed of later. You also have the cyclone separator where centrifugal force is used to separate out the particles and send out clean air. There is also the electrostatic precipitator which uses an interesting principle. You see, all suspended particles have a charge which is true for air pollutants also and are a reason why they stay suspended as suspended particulate matter. Now you suck that dirty air into a chamber and subject it to strong electric current neutralizing its charge. The suspended particles now having lost their charge fall down and are collected while sending the clean air out. Those are the major points for air pollution prevention and control. This concludes our quick revision of air pollution which is in unit 2 of your environmental science and engineering subject, environmental pollution. Thank you and see you again.